Hello SpaceX fans! We are back with another video for you to quench your thirst for all things space. So buckle right in, because we are going on a flight to the stars. But before we move on, make sure to press the subscribe button and do not forget to hit the bell icon to never miss out on any of our latest space niche videos. In this video, we will be bringing you up to date with the recent developments in the crazy world of SpaceX. If everything goes according to plan, we will soon enter a new era of astronomy. The James Webb Space Telescope, the largest and most expensive complex space telescope ever built, is now in space, heading to its final destination. The launch of the $10 billion James Webb Space Telescope on Christmas Day 2021, anticipated for over a decade, was both exciting and terrifying for the thousands of scientists, engineers, managers and support staff who brought the mission to this point. The James Webb Space Telescope's scientific potential is, after all, enormous and it could answer some of the biggest questions about the universe. JWST is often billed as a replacement for the Hubble Space Telescope, but I would prefer to view it as a successor. Hubble has now operated for more than 30 years and has given us amazing views of the universe and many thousands of scientific results. We hope and anticipate that it will continue to operate for many more years. But the relatively small 2.4 meter diameter mirror compared to ground-based telescopes limits its sensitivity and ability to observe the faintest objects. Also, although Hubble has some capability to observe infrared light, it cannot access the wavelengths of light from the very earliest stars and galaxies. JWST, however, will be able to do as such. It may even be able to see population 3 stars, stars that formed from primordial material from the Big Bang, which have never been glimpsed before. Knowing when the first stars were formed, soon after the Big Bang, and understanding how they produced the building blocks of the first galaxies is an important scientific question, and one of the primary science goals of JWST. We know that the elements that are needed for life and modern technology, such as carbon, silicon and gold, were ultimately created in early stars, but we don't currently have a good understanding of how this happened. The need to detect faint objects in the distant universe has been an important driver for the design of the observatory, determining its size, wavelength coverage and need to keep it very cool to minimize undesirable background light. Studying the first stars and galaxies is not the only important scientific program JWST will perform. It is conceived as a general purpose observatory on which astronomers from around the world can apply for time to support their research. For example, observing in the infrared will allow JWST to see through the clouds of dust that enshroud very young stars, which are opaque to visible light. One of the big purposes of the telescopes is actually as time machines, because the distance is to look back in time, says Daniel Eisenstein, an astrophysicist at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics. Eisenstein will use Webb's cameras to travel back in time to when the earliest galaxies were formed, right after the Big Bang. When you look at a distant galaxy light years away, we aren't seeing it in its most recent state. Its distance in light years translates to the number of years it takes for light to arrive on Earth. For example, the closest galaxy to ours is the Canis Major Dwarf Galaxy, which is 25,000 light years away. So its light takes 25,000 years to reach Earth. This means when we look at the Canis Major Dwarf, we're seeing it as it was 25,000 years ago. The further into space scientists can look, the further back in time they can observe a galaxy. Webb, being the farthest seeing telescope yet, can root out the youngest looking galaxies humanity can observe. To understand the formation of galaxies, scientists like Eisenstein will look at several galaxies at different life stages and piece together their developmental timelines. Webb's infrared capabilities are also crucial for observing these galaxies. Light from distant galaxies will be stretched out by the expanding universe. By the time the light reaches our telescopes, its original wavelength will have shifted from the visible or ultraviolet to the infrared. Luckily, picking up infrared signals is right up Webb's alley. 
It's the first time we've had a large, cold telescope in space that can observe these infrared wavelengths, says Eisenstein. The Hubble Space Telescope has managed to capture the shortest wavelength infrared rays stretched from the bluest of light of faraway galaxies. The retired Spitzer Infrared Telescope was much smaller than Webb and couldn't see as far into space. Webb will knock it out of the park in terms of how deep into space and how far back in time it can catch distant galaxies in the acts of growing up. Unlike Hubble, it will be able to see right into stellar nurseries where the stars and their planetary systems are being born. The observations will answer questions about how the clouds of dust and gas collapsed to form stars and how planetary systems form around them. When the first plans for JWST were being discussed more than 20 years ago, no planets were known other than those in our own solar system. Since then, astronomers have discovered thousands of planets orbiting other stars in our galaxies, exoplanets. A significant fraction of the JWST observing program will be devoted to the study of their atmospheres. The wavelength coverage of JWST is particularly well-tuned to studying molecules in exoplanets' atmospheres and the low infrared background from space, giving it a considerable advantage over Earth-based telescopes. Two techniques are available. One takes advantage of the fact that planets can pass in front of their parent star, called transit, creating a dip in the light we see from it. By analyzing the light, broken down by wavelength, the great precision before and during a transit, we can probe the planet's atmosphere to unveil what molecules it consists of. Another technique uses a special instrument called a coronagraph to block the light from the parent star to enable direct imaging of the planet and study its atmosphere or surface. It could help unveil whether a planet is suitable for life, perhaps warranting further investigation and one day sending mini space probes there. The ultimate goal is to find a planet similar to Earth, but it would require a very lucky combination of circumstances because they are likely to be very rare in the solar neighborhood and very faint compared to the parent star. Most likely, JWST will study gas giants like Jupiter and Saturn or ice giants similar to Uranus and Neptune in our own solar system. None of the known planetary systems resemble ours, with many giant planets in closer orbit than ours, more extreme heating of their atmospheres, and more dynamic weather conditions. With this, we have reached the end of our video. Congrats on having such a great attention span. Let us know how excited you are down in the comments below. Thank you for watching. If you've enjoyed the video, make sure to like and subscribe for similar content. Until we meet next time.